Hello everyone. My name is David Brown. I'm a pastor, so I like to be referred to as Pastor Dave. I want to welcome you to our first show on the air. My goal here is to try to provide a variety of perspectives in the areas of religion, politics, and spirituality. Eventually, I'd like the show to be a talk show format. But for now, I'm just going to share my ideas. The interrelationship between religion, politics, and spirituality is of great importance to me. Because I see the problem that the faithful have in dealing with political and even spiritual issues. So, I'd like to try to eliminate on how the hypocrisy of the faithful is affecting politics and while at the same time denying them the very thing that they insist they desire and that is a spiritual relationship with God or Christ or Allah. The divine figure doesn't matter because the process is always the same. My particular issue is with Christians who are also considered themselves politically conservative. That's a particularly striking problem for me, because I am far more devoted to Christ than any other divine figure. And I personally am affected by the contradiction or the hypocrisy of being a Christian and a social conservative. And I do mean social conservative, because I myself am a fiscal conservative. And although I am unaffiliated Christian, my heart, my soul, and my spirit is connected to Christ. So, I am troubled by the idea that a Christian who insists that Christ is the divine figure that allows them to grow in spirit. Why such a Christian would also be socially conservative? And if you don't understand what social conservatism is, well, just think of anti-gay, and anti-immigration, anti-women's rights, regarded more on pro-life issues, but not really pro-life issues. It's a very specific pro-life. It's so I don't use the term pro-life for these people because they're not really in favor of life. If they were in favor of life, they would be for gun control to help limit the number of deaths that are caused by handguns. They would they would insist that we not have the death penalty. They would insist 
that we promote peace, not war. They would also insist on helping mothers who are pregnant. And they would do all that they can to make sure those mothers are properly cared for, are in line with having a job, have the education to give whatever social supports needed for this mother to choose the life of a baby instead of feeling that she needs to have the baby aborted. So such social conservatives are not pro-life, even though they insist that that is their primary purpose. This is sad because they have nothing, have no interest in life, in anyone's life. They become sanctimonious anti-abortionists who think that just by keeping unborn babies alive long enough to be born and then to forget what's going to happen with the newly born child to a mother who cannot raise the child is not Christian. That's the most disturbing part about all this. No matter how much I understand the idea that you're trying to protect the baby that is being carried by the mother, the fact that they, they, social conservatives, who are also Christian, do not consider the life of the mother and do not consider the life of the child after it is born, immediately after it's born, shows that they are not pro-life. And that's the most extreme example of their anti-life position, in spite of the fact that they want to keep the babies alive that are within the mother's womb just long enough so they could be tormented coming into a world where a mother is unprepared to handle the child, unprepared to help the child be raised in a healthy and loving environment. So, as long as that contradiction exists, then I will speak to this almost all the time. I'm writing a book, and it goes along with these topics. It's, certain, it's simply called, What the Hell is a Christian Conservative? That stark contrast between Christian values of life and conservative values, social conservative values of anti-life is very much, or should be very much, a problem within each Christian that holds these two contradictory set of principles. They really should not exist in the same mind, in the same soul. And my contention is that if it does exist, it exists at the exact cost that such Christians claim they have, and that is this personal relationship with Christ. I argue, can't prove such a thing, but I argue because their politics is an anti-life position. An anti-gay position and an anti-rights position that they are not Christian. 
they seem strengthened. <clears throat> and of course, such Christians would deny that. Of course. To me, those, that denial actually goes to the deepest level of denial that we know as humans and that is oppression. They actually can think that they are loving Christians, yet they hold these anti-life, what I, what I like to call confederate levels or confederate values, and that's a problem. The anti-life position politically is not a position that a person who devotes themselves to the loving Christ should have. So, <clears throat> that's one of the major issues that I'll be discussing in my talk show. And uh, we'll add other related subject matters. We will talk about politics, and eventually I would love to hear from an audience that actually cares about these subject matters. And I want constructive give and take here. I don't want just angry people and decide to call me the devil, which actually I don't mind. You can call me the devil. Just don't be vulgar. Don't be cheap. I'm here to make real discussion about something that I perceive to be a problem, and that if I really hope this world is going to be a better world, that we might be able to work on this issue together and actually maybe bring the ideas or the values of Christ to our world. Not to convert, but just to recognize that these kind of values, which are also values in other religions, uh, should be fostered and not contradicted. So, let me illuminate or in some detail what these primary values of Christ should be. To me, it's obvious that we should not be people who stand in judgment of others. That's not Christ like that. If you're standing in judgment, condemning others. Now I know that may seem a little bit of a contradiction because it sounds like I'm standing in judgment. I'm not standing in judgment. I am trying to encourage my brothers and sisters in Christ to let go of their social conservative agenda, which is actually denying themselves the opportunity to connect and maintain a daily relationship with Christ. And do the things that will make you a loving devotee of Christ. And once you do that, you're going to be in a better position spiritually to grow with Christ. And you'll also be a better spiritual asset to the whole world. So, standing in judgment, condemning like the anti, you know, to maintain a position of being anti-gay, where you, you define marriage and you come up with this state terminology of family values and you put it in the name of Christ, it just shows the level of intolerance, hatred, even arrogance for having such values. And I am here to tell you, you should not be holding those values if you really are a lover of Christ. If you really do hold that Christ holds this position in your life and means a great deal to you because you have this personal relationship with Jesus. And of course, this same 